So this year I'm just going to, instead of trying to go to God mode and see if I can get 100%, um, I'll leave that to you guys. And I'm just going to give a commentary on the mark scheme to uh, see that you guys are doing a good enough job because uh, the mark scheme obviously isn't from this first question. I know it doesn't elsewhere as well. Um, so it says apply collision theory, which is year 11 work, which is very interesting, um, to, to, de to demonstrate um, equilibrium. Uh, so increasing the concentration of O2 increases the number of O2 molecules. That's all good. The increases, uh, this is the issue, that's an issue. Uh, this increases the frequency of collisions. Um, and then you should say, um, thereby increasing the probability, um, increasing the probability, probability, um, of, uh, that the collision will be of enough activation energy and the right 3D orientation and therefore react. Um, and so you really need those three things. Um, so at the moment, God knows where that comes from, but the um, collision theory has three parts to it. Um, and so it seems like you're just given one mark for that part there. Okay, so um, do a better job, guys, and tell me what the collision theory is properly. It's not just a collision, but a collision with enough energy and the right 3D orientation for it to react. Uh, and so therefore, of course, the forward um, rate increases because there's more collisions on this side, and therefore it shifts to the uh, right-hand side. Um, and so um, I guess it's three marks for that and only one mark for the a poorly given collision theory. So hopefully you did a better job. Um, so that's what I'll be expecting, guys. Better, um, better mark, better than the mark scheme. Okay, again, straight away, um, polytetrafluoroethane and its monomer. Never do this um, because sometimes in the mark scheme, um, you lose marks for not showing every single bond, uh, and so do that uh, for both the monomer and the polymer. Um, so you describe the formula of tetramonomer and polyphenol monomer. Um, so when it describes, um, when they say describe, they really mean right reactions, provides a balanced equation. Uh, so it's got to have little ends on both sides, which is all fair enough. Um, so again, um, got to do a better job. Okay. Uh, so the next one, addition or condensation. Um, condensation, you need to get a small molecule out. So it's usually water, but it can be HCl or NH3 or, or maybe something else. Um, and you can see here that nothing is coming out from this equation over here. Um, and they're just basically adding this plus adding another one. Uh, so that's why it's addition. So addition polymer, one mark. Um, explain your reasoning. I really think they should say that in there, that they should say there's nothing coming out. Um, and then double bond uh, is broken to allow monomers to join. Um, need to say that too. I think you really need to um, say this third thing as well. Okay, so next one, half reactions straight out of the data booklet. Nothing to say then. Um, nothing to see here. Product is water, of course. Um, here we go, we're doing um, Hess's Law, which is year 11 again, okay, year 11 work, Hess's Law, um, so that's how we know the product's water. Um, compare the movement of electrons, hydrogen, fuel cells, hydrogen and electrons, both similarity, um, there's probably more than one, and I would give two. Um, um, similarity. Maybe you could also say they're of equal of balanced charge as well. Um, balanced charge on both sides. Um, difference, I, I wouldn't risk it in just saying one for each because you might get it wrong. So um, hydrogen ions move through the proton membrane, the electrons move through the wire. Um, you could say they're opposite charges as well. Um, you could probably say quite a lot of things, but you're going to run out of time and space. Uh, significance, flow of electrons makes for a potential difference. Um, what's the whole point? The whole point is um, you're getting chemical energy converted into physical, into electrical energy. Um, uh, that's, that's the point. Um, 
I don't know whether this is as significant as the fact that you're getting electricity. Um, so I would say two points for each one, guys, um, which is a general rule, basically. If you're trying to try and get 100, um, is basically say double what they're asking. Um, for things that are written, word answers is a sort of word answers here because uh, you can never be quite sure what they're after sometimes. Now for this one here, I had to just work it out myself because the answers didn't seem to make sense. Uh, and I think they just must have made a mistake. This doesn't seem to make any sense here at all. Um, and it's also a little bit unfair um, to not, they should probably give you a copy of the um, reduction scale, uh, the redox potentials on the page so you can write on it. Uh, nonetheless, that is enough to write. It is a five mark question. So yeah, there's the working. I just went and did it. Um, I was a little bit of a summary on here just to suss out what this is here. So if the zinc um, actually coats, then it is less reactive because the zinc has gone and coated and the other metal must be more reactive because it's gone and um, it's gone in there and being, uh, it's ox it's um, lost electrons, so it's oxidized. Um, so uh, that means R is more reactive in than uh, magnesium and zinc, according to this thing here. So that allows me um, to put it um, here. So it's up here more uh, reactive than here, than magnesium. Uh, than zinc, oh, sorry, um, and less reactive than magnesium because it didn't react. More reactive than copper and silver, but that's fine. They're way down here. Um, and so the highest you can go up is zinc, and then it doesn't work for magnesium. So it must either be aluminium or uh, manganese. So I've indicated that there. In the same vein, um, copper and silver are way down there. Um, so copper is here, that's the highest we can go up. It doesn't react with uh, magnesium and zinc, so the highest we can go up is uh, magnesium. So Q is one of these four. Now I think they've stuffed this up and put some four random chemicals in there because these chromium, iron, copper are way down here and they don't react with those things. So that's a mistake. Um, it's also just very unclear, this whole thing here doesn't make much sense. Um, and so I know that they're the two reactivities. Now going to the second data set, um, I'll just write that out just to be just to confirm everything's correct. Uh, so R is more reactive because that's positive uh, and that makes sense, R's up here. Uh, so the plus 9.4 is the difference between these two. So the easiest thing is to take uh, 0.94 from both of these and see which one of these matches up. Uh, and so minus in, uh 94 from aluminium doesn't give you a number that's here. Whereas if you minus 94 from uh, manganese, it does give you a 0.24. So those two match up. So therefore it is possible R is manganese and Q is nickel. Uh, it's also possible that it's neither of those and it's some other metal. Um, so a bit of a dodgy question, I think. Um, it's definitely workable with some assumptions and you can go with that, but the mark scheme is uh, certainly unclear and just had to rewrite that one to make for it to make sense and it, it, must, it must be because they've made a mistake. Question 25 now, uh, determine the oxygen state of V2O4, vanadium, vanadium. Uh, so that's minus two, so that gives us a total minus eight, need a total plus eight here. Um, and so that must be a plus four, which is uh, what's stated there. Um, so now it's asking for oxidation and reducing agents, all that sort of stuff. So we need to make sure we've got all of them done. Uh, so it's a total minus 10. We need a total of plus 10. So that must be a plus 5. Um, if it stops doing that, that would be nice. Uh, so that's being reduced. So that must be the oxidizing agent. Uh, and then it's going back. Uh, so you don't have to think too much about that. That must be oxidized reducing agent. Uh, there. Um, and so vanadium is acting as oxidation reaction one. Um, yeah, we got that. Um, and then explain this one is a little strange. Four marks probably should be worth two. So identify it's involved in a chemical reaction, and yet you're to show um, V2.VO5 in, re in chemical reaction one, and then um, V4 to VO5, and then 
uh, five to four, sorry, and then four to five chemical reactions. So that's redundant because you've just done it by doing uh, these two second marks, uh, two marks, um, and it's unchanged at the end of the reaction, which is fine. You could probably say it's a catalyst, uh, so it's not used up in the reaction. Uh, so that's definitely worth a mark. I would say all these three, well, this one can't really get a mark. It's not really here. It's just, um, so just maybe three. Um, so I think that fourth mark is just a giveaway. Um, it's not really markable. All right. Um, so the next question, um, it seems to be quite confusing. So um, this is the working that I've done for it. Um, and so I've just put the boxes as the unknowns and write out all the structures. Um, and so there doesn't seem to be, there seems to be consistency in that the carbon chain is always three long. Um, so the only one I could really make clear sense of was this one. It must be oxidation of alcohol. So it must be aldehyde, um, carboxylic acid or ketone with three carbons long. So it must have come from either a secondary or primary. Um, and so secondary will give the ketone, primary will go from aldehyde, carboxylic acid. So it has to be one of these two, but that one's already shown. So it must be this one. And so if you're getting two of these, that reeks of Markovnikovs, uh, whereas most of it will be uh, one product and, and uh, the other one will be uh, less so based on um, the reactivity and the rules. Um, and so that must mean this was a double bond. Uh, and so that's a double bond there. Uh, but we didn't learn how to get from alcohols to alkenes, but um, there is water coming off. And if you do remove water, that does reduce it to an alkene. Um, so that reaction's not in your syllabus since um, right up at the start, just to confuse everyone. So I looked at the school report that I'd love to know how many people got this one right. Um, so you could have got it from, okay, water's come off. If I remove water, I've got to remake that bond. I've got a double bond, and then the rest does make sense. Or you could have started from the bottom, which is sort of where I came from, and thought, well, it must be these two, and it can't be that peated. Um, that would be a little bit crazy, so it must have been that, so it's my problem, of course. Um, and so good luck to you. All right, I think you can get it from two different ways and you need to be at that level. Um, and so does the rest make sense? Um, so yeah, it is propane, um, but you have to do all this work to really get there. Um, I'm hoping that the writers and markers didn't actually think that we knew this um, because we're not meant to. All right, um, and then the rest sort of follows through um, and makes sense once you've done all that other work, but there's no real room to do that work. I think they should set this out, maybe perhaps like I've set it out on the right-hand side, just to be fair, um, and so that they can think that through and work it out with some space since it's all screwed up. Um, are you allowed to ask questions outside your syllabus? Reactions outside the syllabus? I don't think anything goes, doesn't it? Um, but you can be smart enough to work it out um, two, either two ways. Okay, so reactions that you've never learnt before, yeah, it could be in there, but you should be smart enough to do some complex, unfamiliar work with that and suss out what the answer is. Okay, lastly, um, oh, oh no, not lastly, ouch. Um, so KMNO4 would become lighter. KMNO4 doesn't have to be lighter. Uh, it can go to green, black, or brown as well, uh, depending on how much there is and how much of it needs to be, um, you know, oxidized or reduced in the reaction, the, the volume of it. So this is getting how much of it needs to be reduced, so how much ox um, alcohol is in there getting oxidized. So it's all about concentrations of both to determine whether the colours are changed. So lighter is definitely not... Um, an answer, and the textbooks do have a variation of colours as well, purple to uh, black or purple to brown or purple to green or purple to clear, um, and that's why. Um, so a bit of a concern when they use manganese. So you're gonna... All right, things are not getting better. I'm really not looking forward to paper two. Um, so um, I've had to write a proper answer to this one. Um, so use the Shatler's explanation to explain why phenethylene is a suitable indicator. Um, 
So basically, you get one point for explaining phenolphthalein is acidic, clear to pink on the other side. The OH dis um, the OH removes the H class, and then you're meant to explain pH um, equivalence points lies within the pH range of the color change. So there's no explanation of that. It's just a statement that pH that lies with the pH range for the fill. That's a suitable indicator for this. That's not an explanation. That's just a statement. Um, so a much better um, thing here is um, telling me, okay, the pH change around 7 to 9. So phenolphthalein has 9.6. So it's not actually phenolphthalein. Red's actually better. Um, and so you definitely need this bit here. Uh, that's the reaction that we've got going here. Uh, when you add the NOH, it takes out the H pluses. It reacts with um, H plus, so that's pushed to the pink. So the right-hand side, so it goes pink. Um, and so that's why you see the color change. So why do we care about pKa? That's an explanation we need. Um, so color changes, this is the bit that is needed to get the fourth point, really. Um, not just saying choose the pKa to equal the pH. So you can see, the, the human eye can see a color change when there's 50-50 the most, and when there's like a pH 2 plus or minus 2 indicated, we'll be able to tell that there is a change between the pink and the colors. Um, so the Ka for that is uh, substitutes out to the K equals the H plus. Uh, so if you take the negative log of both, so when the, when the pK equals the pH, that is also when these two are equal. So there's the equations for it. Um, and so that those equations are the necessary explanation uh, to understand why we choose the pKa and to equal the pH of when um, there is the most, when the reaction is complete. Okay, I hope paper two is a hell of a lot better than this. Okay, just lastly to finish off, this one's just a little bit too straightforward. Um, I hope paper two's got some proper stoichiometry in there. Um, just, you know, something halves, the other one doubles or whatever. Um, just not proper chemistry, I'm afraid. Um, let's see what paper two has to offer.